Kia ora, my name is Millie Mannering and I am the 2022 Australasian Scholar for the Our World Underwater Scholarship Society. I'm a marine scientist and an outdoor enthusiast from New Zealand. I'm on a journey to discover more about our wild, beautiful planet and how I can best contribute towards its protection. Thanks to the support from Rolex, over the past four months I've had the privilege of working with different communities, organisations and passionate individuals dedicated to furthering the understanding and conservation of our underwater world. From the tropics to the Arctic, I've gained diving experience, certifications and a whole lot of perspective along the way. In preparation for remote diving and operations, my first scholarship visit took me to Catalina Island to learn more about dive safety. I gained an introduction to hyperbaric medicine from the Executive Director of the Catalina Hyperbaric Chamber, Carl Huggins. I really enjoyed advancing my understanding of diving physiology and leading patient treatment scenarios as I trained to operate the chamber. By the way, I love seaweed. It's incredibly ecologically and economically important and Catalina Island is fringed by the most spectacular giant kelp forest. Under the surface canopy, I was lucky enough to join OWSS President and Associate Professor Dr. Kerry Nichols and help her out with her field work. I really value interdisciplinary approaches to research and the Nichols Lab integrates ecology and oceanography to study these coastal marine ecosystems in the face of climate change. A critical component to marine science and conservation is the ability to engage with people and communicate information through the use of media. In Monterey Bay, California, I met with numerous local underwater photographers to become more familiar with my own camera setup, generously sponsored by Reef Photo and Video and Light and Motion. Scuba diving is such an awesome tool to experience the world of life beneath the surface, and I enjoyed capturing my own unique perspective. But you can also experience the magic underwater if you hold your breath. No one understands this more than Kirk Kroc, founder of Performance Freediving International, who invited the 2022 Our World Underwater Scholars to the Cayman Islands to participate in a freedive training program. I really enjoyed the physical and mental challenge of freediving, and despite sickness-related disruptions, gained my PFI Intermediate Freediver qualification and loved unlocking this new discipline to access the world of water. During my scholarship year so far, I have experienced how interconnected people are to the ocean across the globe. Working with the Swedish Indian tribal community and shellfish biologist Julie Barber, I experienced how the connection to land and ocean is an integral way of life. We conducted surveys of wild clam populations within the tribal fishing grounds to estimate biomass, suggest sustainable quotas and for tribal and state fisheries co-management. In a historic moment, we built the first modern clam guarded in the USA on Kukatali Preserve. Reviving this ancient aquaculture technique from thousands of years ago, we moved 33 tonnes of rock needed to create the wall. This form of environmental engineering is an ancient indigenous practice used to boost shellfish production and will provide food security in the face of climate change and protect these ocean resources for future generations. Moving up the coast of the Pacific Northwest, I travelled to the Calvert Island Ecological Observatory in Canada to conduct research with the Hakai Institute. 
In these remote areas of coastal BC, I joined the scientific dive team to identify, measure and count sea stars. We monitored for sea star wasting disease, which is catastrophically reduced sea star populations. Consequently, sunflower sea stars, Pycnopodia, were nearly completely wiped out and are now critically endangered. This has wide-ranging implication for the decline of kelp forests on the Pacific coast, as sea stars are keystone predators. We swapped to gain an understanding of microbial communities living on Pycnopodia and their associations between healthy and diseased individuals. My time with Hakai highlighted the importance of gathering long-term data sets and continued scientific monitoring to understand ecological health. But it was time to leave sunny BC for colder waters in the north. I arrived in Ikalaktutiak, Nunavut, to work with the Canadian High Arctic Research Station in Ocean Nevix, Canada. As polar research is a big interest of mine, I enjoyed learning about the ongoing research projects at the station, and I helped out with the Canadian Museum of Nature to investigate seaweed biodiversity in the area. Ocean Networks Canada have a community-led cabled ocean observatory in the bay, which I joined the team to help maintain, service and redeploy. These series of instruments allows the community to gather scientific data and combine this with traditional knowledge to understand more about the dramatically changing environment. Warming in the Arctic is occurring three to four times faster than the global average, and climate change is having significant impacts on ecological processes and indigenous culture. And just as winter had reached the Arctic, it was time for my next adventure. Follow along with the rest of my scholarship journey. Over the next six months, I want to be involved in more scientific research expeditions, technical dive training, advance my underwater photography skills, and conduct research in the Southern Ocean. But I'm most excited to meet more of the many, many incredible people that are dedicated to the ocean. <laughs>